All right, everybody, thanks for joining me today. So um, what I wanted to go over today is um, if you're purchasing an AR-45, what to expect as far as uh, what parts to keep on hand and stuff like that. So I bought a brand new pump in Gearbox because my original pump had about two, 200, two to 250 jobs on it. And I didn't know if it was just going to, you know, quit on me in the field or if I was on a big contract where I needed to change out a pump real quick, didn't have time to do a repair, that I could do that. But um, so now I have a second season on my pump, my original pump uh, that's on my trailer, and it's working just fine. Now, yeah, you need to work on it. And it, it doesn't cost that much money, and I'm going to go over some of the stuff you need to do and the parts you need to have on hand so you can do a quick repair in the field and get right back to uh, spraying. First off, when I, when I first got the, my original machine that's on my trailer, I had a leak right here, right out of that manifold, and it was just shooting up. Uh, so I bought it at, at Sprayer Depot. And they got a hold of AR, and AR sent me a uh, O-ring kit, and so I thought, okay, that'll be just fine. So I, you know, I'm I then was acting as their service guy, you know, which I don't like. They sent me the parts; I still had to do it myself. So even though just this one was leaking, I changed these three out, and then I changed three these three out, and this manifold here you can get you you can loosen it up and it'll pull back just a little bit and you can take it apart and get this and service this without taking the gearbox off it's kind of a pain and it, it only comes back up just far enough you can just barely get the uh, check valves out and um, so I pull the check valves out they all look good I put new uh, seals in put it all back since then I've never I've never had a leak on this side of the manifold and in fact when I first got it I didn't have a leak I just thought they sent me six o-rings well they're not really o-rings but they're they're um, flat cut seals there's more seals than o-rings um, so I just went ahead and put them in but I as it turns out I really didn't have to what I found was when I took this apart this piece here which is right here had a big um, glob of flashing right here plastic flashing so when this was trying to compress it it was just leaking so it had been right up here so there was some messed up plastic all I did was just smooth it out and put the new o-rings in and everything worked now um, you know you hear everybody online saying you know all all mine does is leak and seep and stuff like that well yeah um, the the problem is we have plastic um, and so this plastic you know it, it doesn't pull down tight uh, someone will make a jillion dollars if they just design this manifold out of stainless steel so it'd be a one and done uh, after about um, oh I'm gonna say 150 jobs I started getting a leak right here and so I thought it was just the o-ring on this plug so I put a new o-ring on it still leaked and I'm like what the heck's going on so um, after looking at it further the there was a there's a seam right here there's a this is molded so this is half of the mold half of the mold injection mold and somehow it there's a seam you can you can actually see the seam going right around the middle um, and there was also a seam right around here like this and you could just see a white trail right here where it was leaking where the where the uh, where the seam had split apart and so no matter how many o-rings you put on there it's still going to leak so um, so I had to replace this on my old one then I bought an extra one so every time I buy a part I buy two parts uh, so I have an extra one 
and um, let's see so the other part that leaked was up here right here where this where this uh, pressure gauge goes there's a seam right through the middle it cracked right through the seam right here and it, it was just leaking and getting all over so uh, no amount of o-rings you put on there will keep it from you know leaking so it takes you know new pieces um, anyway um, thank goodness it's easy to repair and all my repairs have been on this side so how do you repair this one is you get to buy this piece right here and uh, it just takes you know maybe to take this all off and and put this piece on and back is like really it's a like a 15 minute job uh, so I I buy my repair parts at North Georgia Airless and like this piece here was like $18 and there's quite a bit going on um, these smaller pieces of manifold are about $14. You see this piece here goes, you know, here and here. So what I suggest you you doing is it, to buy all a complete manifold setup right here to have as spare parts, uh, including the gauge because this is my old gauge thank goodness I had a new pump waiting to go on in case my old pump went but something I didn't uh, expect was this o-ring right here popped out and was leaking it wasn't really spraying but leaking and my gauge here was just doing this all the time so I had this new you know pump and I you know put the new gauge on leaks gone pressure steady um, and it's just a matter of you know a 30 second repair so um, the other thing uh, is the the cost of these o-rings here you know I said like this piece here was like $18 well depends on where you buy these but these are $20 I've I've been quoted like $27 I think but I think North Georgia Airless uh, felt bad for me um, they didn't have to but I think these were like 15 or 16 dollars but virtually these are the same price so I don't get it so just get your parts in order the other the other thing is um, a lot of people are using one inch manifolds um, the, this pump comes with an inch and a quarter inlet so a lot of people just Put a different fitting on here and reduce it right here to an inch and then run this you know your manifold into here you know inch line um, that seemed to be the easiest way of doing it and you'll have less fittings otherwise you'll have to put an inch and a quarter to an inch coupling right here so you have extra places for leaks AR does not make this this is a comet uh, fitting right here. So if you call North Georgia Airless and tell them you want to convert uh, This inlet to an inch they know what comet Part you know you have to put the o-ring on but you know what comet part to uh, sell you So here's the here's the thing you need to do You actually need to do this to your pump before you mount it on your trailer is uh so you are going to you are going to be doing maintenance on it. So you're going to be taking this manifold off. So when you work on it, you take all these bolts out, even these center ones here, take it off and get it in your hands and you can actually, you know, twist around, work on it, get it apart a lot easier if it's completely off. When you do that, when you loosen take these bolts out, you'll see here there's these nuts. So it's it's not threaded there's a nut that slides down in here like so well, if you can see it the nuts in there right in there so these slide in and out it's you know it's a, it's a wide tolerance so they just drop in and slide all the way down that's just fine on these so when you take these bolts out these nuts right here that are up in here drop out the bottom 
Now you can, and what I've done before I realized that, because I just figured I'd put it on, wouldn't have any leaks or whatever, no maintenance. So what I had to do was take a, a piece of uh, sponge like that, cut a piece, you know, maybe a three quarter inch square, and from underneath, stuff these holes to hold these nuts up. Because the first time I took it off, I took these out, the nuts dropped off, and I'm like, what the heck? And let me tell you that working blindly up in here, trying to get these nuts in, holding that in and trying to get a sponge or something stuck in there to hold them is a pain in the butt. And I thought if, you know, I, if I'd known better, I would have glued those in. So that's what I'm gonna do now, is I'm gonna show you. I'm just gonna take clear silicone, and I'm going to fill this cavity up like so because you're not taking those out anyway now after I mount this if I have to you know I'll just I'll just do one up here on the top because so you can see better because these nuts are never going to come out anyway even if I uh, change a head off I bought new nuts just in case so at North Georgia Airless I bought I bought new nuts they're like I don't know that the parts are pretty reasonable I think these are like 75 cents a piece um, so just do that and you'll never you'll never lose your nut I guess what I should be saying you know what I mean the other reason I bought a brand new pump was if, if I don't mind doing my own repairs but if it's in a busy season and if I get a contract for you know 30 duplexes or something I don't want to come home and tear this down and rebuild it and then put it back on I just need a you know if you just change the pump out we're probably talking an hour so I could do that out in the field change the pump out then during the winter off season I can do a complete rebuild on this but uh, you know I've, I've just completed my second season on my original pump and I'm gonna run it till it dies. Um, and I'm gonna keep, you know, fixing the little leaks on it. Yeah, it's kind of a pain in the butt, but you know what, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Now, I, I might trade it for a different kind of pump, but as far as using a uh, diaphragm pump, uh, that is capable, like this one here, it redlines right at uh, 290 pounds. And I'm gonna tell you that 95% of my jobs, I ran it right to that red line. So I worked it hard because most of my houses were a story and a half, two stories. So you always got that peak or, you know, the second floor on the back side or whatever. So, so I always ran it up here. Now, if I did like a, uh, you know, a manufactured home or something, all one level, then I'd run it about 200. But very seldom did I do that it was always right at the red line so I really worked my original pump hard it's lasted um, I I would if I hadn't already bought this second pump here I might entertain a different style of AR pump or even a Comet but you know I read the comments uh, online and and people's comments leak too and and uh, the ARs are leaking and the other brands leak. Uh, some, I guess, leak more than others. Here's something I did too. So with the gun off, I'd run it right to 290 pounds. When the gun is on, it dropped down here to say, I don't know, 230 to 250, somewhere in here. So sometimes I needed just like three or more feet of distance. So I would radio my son he works with me and I, I would I would get on the gun and start spraying the pressure dropped to here I would tell him to go ahead and run it up to 300 and so with my gun in he could he could crank this up where it's back down here to the red line now I'm shooting like six eight feet farther and then before I let off I tell him to back it back down then I let off that's just a little trick to get a little bit more extra you know feed on your shot you know um, but 
I was really looking at, uh, really been studying the, the uh, AR-50. Um, it looks to me like all your maintenance is on the top and you don't have any, you know, tight quarters to work on it. And, uh, and you can dumb it down. It's, it's like 14 gallons a minute at 500, I think it's 540 pounds or 560. You really only need about 300 pounds to do any soft washing. So you could dumb your AR-50 down and make it last longer, but you'd have that extra capacity if you needed to make that extra, you know, 10 foot shot, you can go ahead and run it up. But anyway, I didn't do that. I bought it at second AR, so it's going to be a year or two probably before I even uh, entertain a different make and model. Uh, but that's it. Get your parts on, you know, on hand before you even start because I had the my first leak right when I first started it up. So that's about it. I appreciate y'all watching and following me. And I know I didn't make many videos this summer, but I was I was extremely busy. Um, so I mean that's a good thing for me, bad thing for videos. Sometimes I really wanted to make a video, but I had you know four or five jobs. And when you make a video, you're always worried about the shot and different takes and setting a camera up and you know trying to get your you know trying to to narrate correctly um yeah i probably got 20 takes on this just going over this so i mean it just takes time um so anyway i appreciate you guys uh following me again and uh until the next video which i hope will be soon because i got me a whiteboard so look for some whiteboard stuff anyway uh please like and subscribe talk to you next time thanks for watching bye